Rail. I think that through that negotiations, that Atlantic um, formulated or Sylvia Rome formulated a certain attitude toward the act and vice versa. Sylvia, she hated the management. She hated Lewis. She liked the album, but she didn't like the management. Sylvia decided, well, you guys have made it. You guys done, done, done made a name. You, you can find your way now. You made us a lot of money. Thank you for the business deal. It's done. And it was done. We thought that we were so successful because we were number one on the charts so many times. We just did not think us switching to a new management company or making a few bad decisions would kill us dead. I met Demetrius Ship Jr. working on the third Troop album, Deepa, which I was almost the executive producer. Of, I produced 90. Lewis mentioned this young producer to me, like, man, I got this kid that's in Teddy Riley's camp. You might want to hear some of his music. Mm -hmm. So um, my conception was his manager, and I guess they were on the phone, and they played some tracks over the phone. And he had that new Jack Swing as he had, but it had a little West Coast thing to oh, it, shit. you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I was like, man, he bad, you know? And, and for me, I'm always, I wanted to become a great producer so I know surrounding myself by good producers makes you a Quincy Jones Dr. Dre type. After he left Teddy's camp and we left Atlantic I got with him and produced the fourth troop album Little Something Something. Somebody wasn't happy with me too. Right? Well you know uh, yeah, sometimes it goes that way. Uh, One or two people probably don't understand what's going on at the time and it doesn't make sense. But... Rodney and them didn't want to participate. They didn't like Meech like that and so the fact that they didn't like Meech prompted Alan to say well it's just us anyway. We should do it by on our own, you know. Your contract to do an album, then you need to be in a studio. Three people didn't come. Rodney, Reggie, and John John didn't show up. And we did a whole album. It was actually Steve and Alan's idea that it'd be just the three of us, because it just had been the three of us working. And there's three people on the record one mother ain't never saw in your life. What the f is this? That was so hurtful, dude. It was like this. If I can, if I can sit here and say I didn't cry, I didn't think like that was so appalling to me. It's like how can I respect somebody else for doing that? They don't want us anymore. They don't want us to be in the group anymore. I think the frustration just had built up with them being kind of sitting on the shelf for a period of time, and them not being able to move further with Atlantic. Right? If we had been closer and trusted each other more, we could have succeeded more. But I went against my group, and it, it served to be the worst decision that I ever made as a human being in my life. This is the record that destroyed our careers. It killed us. For the longest time, I didn't realize Troop was ultimately over, so um, I, would, I was always writing songs. I've been writing songs since I was in the 10th grade. So I was always holding songs and putting songs to the side for this random Troop album that someday, this Phantom Troop album that was going to happen one day. And uh, my mom kind of took hold of me and kind of shook me and was like, son, you got to wake up. You know, Troop is not happening anymore. You know, it was almost like I was in a dream. And when I woke up, it was two, three, four years later, and I'm still thinking troop, troop. And my mom brought it to my attention that life goes on, you know. You know, she was saying, you know, you write beautiful songs. You, you have so many songs, and you're just sitting on these songs, and there is no such thing as troop anymore, you know. Once I accepted what she said, I decided to start looking and seeking out people and groups who were working on albums and just start sending my music around. Steve Russell released two solo albums and won three Grammys, writing and producing songs for dozens of artists. I've sold close to 100 million albums as a songwriter producer. Alan McNeil released two solo albums as well. John John continued to record as a solo artist and became a contributor on a gospel radio show. Rodney Benford started a business catering barbecues. Reggie Warren 
became a chef. Well, yeah, tell us. Well, we, we hang out periodically anyway, you know. Um, and one day, actually, I was at Rodney's house. Mm -hmm. And we were just sitting around talking about old times and stuff. And um, I mentioned to him, I said, you know what? It, it, it's almost, I said, right now, R&B is so empty. You know, there's really not anything that's going to, that can stop us. There's anything, nothing to compare us to, you know. We could actually make a move right now, you know, because nothing's out there. Exactly. And so that's what actually started the whole, you know, comeback. Did season. anybody have any hesitations or everybody was just like, we're all in? You no, know, I don't think anyone had any hesitation about it at all. We just wanted to go ahead and, you know, still give people what they really want. You know, people have always been asking about us when you guys are going to go ahead and do another record. Uh, when you guys gonna do some more performances, uh, we miss you guys. We want to see you guys. Yeah, but she's right between you and me, yeah. Girl, we can make this our song, and we can party till the dawn. It's incredible. I just saw you, how you came to me. It's like deja vu every time I look at you. We had all talked about it. It's going on the five of our label that should have came out on True Records. Rodney called me one day with the rest of the guys on the phone, and they said, man, we really don't want to deal with Alan. And I said, man, how are we going to do that? We decided to send him a letter just to end that relationship and let him go on with his life. All right, you guys got new music, correct? Yes, sir. Uh, let's talk about the new music you got going on. Well, we have uh, three compilations that we just released to just warm the people up, the fans up to our new album called These Days. Um, the first album is The B-Sides, um, Deeper Revisited, and The Slow Songs. And okay. each, each one of those compilations, we have new music, unreleased music on it. So. All right. uh, there's new troop music out and available right now, and our new single is called Not a Million. Not Years. a Million. Nah, yeah, so yeah. You still believe in that real R&B soulful music is out there? So oh, I guess what? We, we, we have a single out right now too called Pick Up Your Money. Oh, yeah. oh man, there you go. That's right. That's there you go. <laughs> Troop. Yeah. And then the house. Yes. My God. Man, they all, you know what's good? I heard somebody say all of them. It's a reunion, but a reunite. They, I'm not here to ask what happened. It's about now. Alan just had to take a vacation. He just over there in Hawaii somewhere. He went over there, got mad, and couldn't get back. He what happened? He went over there after Obama left out, and he was in there with Trump, and Trump didn't let him back in the group. So I almost see Alan. I almost got in the group, but I helped get your passport back. Good to see. These are written. This is true. What's happening, y'all? Good man. Twenty nine years. Yep. Yep. Right now, Reggie is choosing to do something right now that we, we, you know, that we don't like, 
but, you know, we have to still love him. We still have to continue to pray for him. And he'll Absolutely. continue to always, he'll, yeah, he'll always be our brother. So it's a hurtful thing for us not to be with Reggie right now. Sure. I got a yeah. tribute to Luther Vandross, Never yeah. Too Much, that's out yeah. there. My new single, I Want to Fly Away, is mm-hmm. out there. And uh, I'm, I'm kind of proud of that record because the background vocals, I have Alan's brother on that record. Uh, Shelton, oh, Shelton, yeah. some background oh, vocals on yeah. there. So yeah. <laughs> just did our first project together yeah. called Mac Russ. We just mm-hmm. um, remade Michael Jackson's Lady in My Life. That's our first single. Oh, yeah. nice. So that's available as well. Video, so we have music out. Soon, soon I'm done with it. I don't know when I'm done with it, but it's coming out soon. Rodney B. The attack. <laughs> so, I the thing, Steve, there's a documentary question in there. Oh, yeah, we're working on our, our first film. Um, it's called Five of a Kind. It's the story of it's our experience in truth and experience in the music business and all that stuff. So, we're working on that as well, which is pretty exciting. And I also have a radio show called The Heart of R&B yeah. that's on every Wednesday night oh, on Dash Radio. Dash Radio. Dash Radio. <laughs> Hosted by myself and Michelle. Yes. <laughs> and Michelle. After 30 years, you know, you, we love what we do. Mm-hmm. I mean, every time I hit the stage, I, I get that, that same, like it's the first time, like, mm-hmm. like hey guys, let's, let's do this. I'm out here with my guys. But it's a job, you know. You know, it, yeah. you know a lot of people don't realize what we put into it. And, and and what we endure and the traveling and the being away from family, Mental. you know. <laughs> <laughs> but but we you know hey we we enjoy it. Yeah. You yeah. know so we we just thankful to still be here after thirty years, you know still recording, still together, yeah. still doing shows. I, I you know I wouldn't change my my life for nothing. Still yeah. fly. Still fly. <laughs> <laughs> <He's crazy. laughs> coming from the heart as far as performing entertaining singing troop has it all I can't take it more. 